from where you sit in APS, what are our biggest barriers to equity? I think that the biggest barriers to equity are just information or um, lack of the facts or knowledge out there. Hmm. Um, yeah, basically where where is APS um, in terms of graduation rates? Mm -hmm. Um, how, I mean, are, are students succeeding and do teachers, do parents, um, do the APS district staff know where we are? Mm. So it's about uh, know, knowing where we are and, and maybe how to push past where we are mm -hmm. or, or think differently about Yeah, it. I think really knowing where we are and connecting with it personally. Um, what does that look like for you? So. In the classroom, knowing my student achievement data and then comparing it to other teacher, teachers on my grade level was really important to me to know where I stood and what I needed to do to make sure that my kids entered the next grade level, entered kindergarten, ready to succeed. So I think about it in the same way, um, connecting personally, knowing where we are as a district and then knowing what's, how does that connect to me, how does that make me feel Mm -hmm. And how can I set a goal and do better for my kids, for my department? So it's taking the, the numbers, the, the, you know, the data, and then making it personally relevant, making it something that you yeah. actually can tackle. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you feel like in your role you're tackling to, to really support equity? Um, I feel like I am... That's a good question. I feel like I'm tackling basically how to um, get, how to engage and um, motivate teachers to mm -hmm. really use technology in their classrooms to, um, to move the boxes or mm -hmm. to help make those gains. So really let's identify the, the big focuses or the areas that we want to improve upon and how can we use technology as a tool um, to help us reach our goals. And so really looking at that as a, as a strategy, a core strategy for, for teachers. Yep. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of, uh, of what you're talking around, uh, around engagement and, um, and uh, really looking for opportunities. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like is the best way to engage a teacher in that conversation about equity, about increasing those outcomes for kids? Mm -hmm. I think the best way is to start with your own, is to build a connection and a personal relationship with that teacher mm -hmm. um, and to really tell your 60 second story or your story of self about, you know, why I'm here asking the teacher, why are you here? Why do you come to work to school every day? Um, why are we working tirelessly to get <laughs> them um, really invested in why we're doing this work? Yeah building that rationale, and then setting those goals. Why is that story of self so important to you? I just think it's, it's, the, most in, it's the most impactful way to um, kind of break down, break down the walls and connect people. Mm. Yeah. Do you feel like we're, um, we're listening to kids and their stories of self? I feel like we can always do better. Okay. Um, and I think a really great way to start doing better is by connecting with families more uh -huh. um, and really getting their stories um, and their experiences as a family um, and getting them invested um, as a way to get student get to student stories mm. but yeah so by connecting with the family and learning the story even from them, mm -hmm. um, you are more fully invested in their success. Yeah. But I think it also goes back to that plan that Rico talks about to really ask kids. I mean, you, you ask a four-year-old, why do you, why you come to school? What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, and getting, getting them to build that plan and that investment mm -hmm. um, to share to share their their voice and to have a say in their own education. Yeah. I like that, having a say in your education. Um, do you feel like that is uh, an, uh, an issue of equity, is having a say and, and being able to kind of determine the path? 
I do. Education? I do. Um, I think that that's the first conversation that we we have to have is we just kind of need to have a, a keep it real conversation <laughs> with everyone and just say, hey, are we happy with what we're getting? Mm. Yes or no? What do you want? And get that investment from all the stakeholders so that kids' voices can be heard. And if the answer is no, really having them be a part of the community that decides how are we going to make it better. Mm. Um, what do you need yeah. to be successful? Because I think where you're sort of headed there is um, asking very clearly whether or not um, what we have, what we are doing for and with kids is, is enough. And that is a part of what, what Rico has said pretty, pretty consistently. Are we doing everything that we possibly mm -hmm. can be? Um, but I do think, and you, you mentioned this uh, just a little bit ago, this idea of, of being tireless mm -hmm. um, and sort of dogged in that. Yeah. How is it that we don't burn one another out? Or how do we support one another in, in okay, so we're not doing enough, but doing more requires more of me, and I don't have right. more. So how do you balance that to, to really support teachers and support one another in giving as much as you can without burning one another out? I think that is the million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's about working smarter, not harder. Okay. Which is easy to say. Sure. Um, it's a nice little bumper sticker. It is. Um, and really, I don't have the answer to that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's about us just stating we might not know how how to do this work without getting burnt out. How do we take care of each other and really maybe studying other districts or other schools that are successful at, um, at not getting burnt out. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what you were talking about there around supporting one another, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have... Uh, a community, and you were talking about all of the stakeholders, right? Yeah. If we're all invested in that, I yeah. think there's a lot of value there in, in just what you're talking about, supporting one another yep. in that process. Yeah, and just, I think, remind, being um, kind to ourselves and kind to each other and knowing <clears> that <throat> this is um, a marathon, <laughs> it's not a sprint, and just knowing it's okay to stop and take breaks and really take care of each other and to take care of yourself first mm -hmm. um, so that we can continue to go back and the tank isn't empty and you can add more to more fuel to the fire and keep doing great work. Nice. Yeah. Well, I feel like you've definitely tackled this question. Um, the last thing that I'll ask of you is uh, what question you think we should be asking and answering. Um, what is the one thing that either keeps you up at night or that you uh, are grappling with uh, as, a, as a question that, that we should all be tackling together? That's a good question. Um, I think I'm wondering, um, I always want to go, I just, my mind always wants to go back to how, how are we doing? Um, huh. How are we doing as a community? are we doing as a district but I also wonder what what are the essential like pieces are there any I would want to know what pieces do you think are are missing mm. um, to the puzzle mm -hmm. of APS um, or do we do we have a complete puzzle and it's about reworking things mm -hmm. so yeah, I like the, the, that frame there of what are the missing pieces for our kids? What are the missing pieces for our system? Mm -hmm. um, and if it is just reorganizing, right, and just sort of, oh, this doesn't fit here, it fits here better, or things like that, yeah. um, then that's one thing. But if there are truly, like, we need to dig under the couch cushions to find <laughs> yes, the, the, the pennies, missing piece, right. you know, um, then, then we, should, we should be doing that. That's really interesting. Um, well, I really appreciate you you sort yeah. of grappling with me and, and sort of helping to tell the story of APS. Thank you so much for your time.